Hey, what is up guys? Kevin here with Pog Pogs, and today, as the title suggests, we will be going over Relinquished. More or less, not really a deck profile, but just does Relinquish really get help this format? And uh, what cards help, what cards hurt, and uh, overall, what I think about uh, Relinquish moving forward after the Battle City, <laughs> Battle City, Battle City Speed Duel box. Um, <clears throat> so let's go over it first, right? The man, or the thing, the legend, you know, uh, Relinquished. What does Relinquish do, um, if you don't know, and um, how do we normally use this, right? So Relinquish is a ritual monster, one star, dark, spellcaster, zero tag, zero defense. And it says, uh, once per turn, uh, if it doesn't have anything equipped to it, you can equip an opponent's monster uh, to this card as an equip spell. Um, and then it gains the attack and defense of that respected monster that it sucked up. Giving the card the name, the suck, right? Um, so, this would be good for clearing opponent's monsters, uh, stealing a big attack monster, beating them over with the, uh, with the attack that Relinquish gains. Um, also, Relinquish has the effect where if it would be destroyed by battle, um, the monster is then instead destroyed, and the damage you would have took when it had a monster equipped to it, <clears throat> is equally inflicted to your opponent as effect damage at the same time so really really good card it's a good control card um, and it always has been a good control card even outside of speed duels um, so I, I don't think anything really changes after the box i think you still play three relinquished um, there's nothing that really changes for that um, moving on though let's talk about a card that people are hyped about I don't know why, but we're going to talk about it anyway. It's pre-preparation of rights. I'll put the card on screen. Uh, so pre-preparation of rights states that you can search for a ritual monster and one ritual spell that's specifically listed in its text, uh, or vice versa. I don't remember exactly, uh, but it searches. It searches for both the ritual spell and the ritual monster um, that names that monster. Um, so we were saying, well, we'll play this uh, and we'll get both the materials. We'll get this and we'll get the ritual spell for it. I don't like that. I very much dislike that. Very much so for the fact that I'm now having to play six new cards, at the very most, um, to play pre-prep, okay? Uh, maybe we only play two ritual spells. I'm still having to play five if I want to get into my pre-prep. Why do people want to play pre-prep? Uh, mainly for the fact of, uh, I'll have to move this up, for this skill card right here. That was a nice spell, came out in the last, um, little structure starter decks uh, for speed duels one of them included pegasus and yugi pegasus had one skill for tunes and one for relinquish slash thousand eyes um, and basically what this does it lets you fusion and uh, ritual summon without the actual polymerization or the ritual card for relinquished in return you have to discard a card so any card becomes those cards and um, you still have to send the materials for this or um for the thousand eyes restrict um in return you don't get to conduct your battle phase ah that's why people want to play pre-prep because playing the ritual spell and not losing your battle phase is better than losing your battle phase because it is so important or is it that goes to another card um that's really important in this deck which is the Illusionist Faceless Mage. Um, there's a loop for these. This goes back and forth. Um, it's once per turn. If you destroy the Relinquish, you get the Faceless Mage back. If the Faceless Mage is destroyed, you get the Relinquish back. Once each, right? So one, two. So that's all you get. Um, this card's really, really good. It doesn't really matter that you don't get a battle phase, especially if you have this in hand or graveyard because it'll just summon itself. Oh, so good. So, so good. Uh, it recycles the Relinquish as well. It's just a really good card. In times, we see people playing two to three of this in the deck, which is acceptable, right? So, in that instance, we're still not really doing much good in explaining why pre-prep is needed. And quite honestly, I think that's just about it. It's not really needed. Because if you're going to play pre-prep, right? Um, you know, maybe you take out the Sinjus. But then you're losing monster lineup count. So why would you want to do that? 
Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Maybe you play some of these, you leave them in, but you're still adding more cards in. Um, especially since you do have to play the ritual spell to play pre-prep. Um, it sucks. <laughs> if you had regular preparation of rights, yeah, okay, cool. It'd be a good card. But it is not. That's why we have Send You, right? It's a monster. It's prep on legs without the effect of adding back a spell. But again, we have this. Um, so I don't think pre-prep is actually that great. It's kind of just mad. And even when doing test hands, it either showed up at the wrong time or I already had the materials in hand to summon Relinquished, um, even if we weren't playing this skill. So it's not good. <laughs> so let's not talk about it because it sucks, <laughs> all right? It's really not that great. It's great for other decks, especially ones that don't have the ability to summon something so easily. And I get it, people might not want to play this because they want their battle phase for Relinquish, but in the long run, do you really need it, right? Because you're playing a control deck. You're not really trying to play an OTK deck here. You're playing control. So with that being said, let's move on. Another card that came out um, in, well, one of the many, many decks for um, Speed Duel Box was Storm. If you don't know what Storm does, boop, I'm going to put it up there. And um, <laughs> so Storm says, destroy as many uh, spells and traps as you control as possible. Does not include itself. Uh, and destroy the same amount of back row um, that your opponent has, or spell and traps your opponent has. Um, is good, because now we can pair it with Wild Tornado. Wild Tornado for Relinquish becomes a million times better, not only for the fact it's Wild Tornado to get extra advantage off of it, but you also get Relinquish. If you need to clear the monster that it sucked up before for something more powerful, <clears throat> you can play the Storm, get rid of the card that's equipped to the Relinquished, and pop a back row, as well as freeing up the spot to suck up another card. <laughs> Really, really good. So much better than Double Cyclone. Double Cyclone, I think, gets replaced in this deck with the Storm. And I think we play maybe one more Wild Tornado. I think I only play one right now. I'd be dumb if I did. Yeah, but I only play one right now. I might actually want to bump this up to two now because it gets a lot better with Storm. Yes, it's a combo piece because you need multiple cards to pull it off, but Storm itself is, again, a really, really good card, mainly for the fact that Relinquish puts cards your opponent's cards to destroy more of your opponent's cards with Storm. Um, moving on, uh, there is one bane of existence for this deck, and that is Book of Moon. However, we can also use Book of Moon itself uh, to play against our opponents. If it can be used against us, we can use it against our opponents. So playing Book of Moon in this deck, uh, I think, is a relatively fair option. All right, it's fair. Um, mainly for the fact that we can flip our opponent's stuff face down. It's going to destroy other things. we got things that are going to, um, you know, they're going to out our combo. Play Book of Moon. Um, so I think Book of Moon really still is a staple in a lot of decks regardless. Um, especially if they're more control based. And as we know, Relinquish is more control based. Um, moving on from there, it gets shaky and mistakey. Um, mainly for the fact that there's not really a lot of ideas for the deck. Uh, if you're going to play um, the Thousand Eyes Restrict in the um, extra deck, um, I still think it's worth playing a Thousand Eyes Idol, even if it's only one. Uh, it's fodder um, to tribute uh, to summon this or to discard it out of your hand. It's still not great. Uh, if you're not going to play the Thousand Eyes and you have no intention of playing Thousand Eyes, don't play this card. Uh, I think it'd be bad to play this card. But if you're intentionally trying to get this out and it's important, if the meta shapes up, this is still going to be an important card. But for now, we're going to put it to the side. <clears throat> Another card that's going to have a lot of importance, maybe not so much, but I still think it has a good a bit of importance, especially with more traps that were imported uh, into Speed Duels, um, the Djinn, the, the Disarea Rituals. Dis Disarray, oh god, I'm having a Sam moment here. Um, disarray. Disarrear. <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, mainly for the fact that it's able to be sent off from the graveyard for the, um, for, as a tribute for the ritual summon, right? Um, since it's a little one star, it's going to summon the relinquish really easily. And when it's used that way, um, or any way for the tribute of a ritual monster, that monster gains the effect that is unaffected by your opponent's trap cards, or all trap cards in general. Hold on. Sorry, I didn't read my own cards. <laughs> by trap effects all over. Not just your opponents, all over trap effects, right? Um, so, if you play this, um, you're going to be going into a lot of things. We have widespread ruins, a new card. 
Uh, if some whatever reason Windstorm comes back, if you were playing it in Pac-Man, it's unaffected. If we're going to be playing, um, <clears throat> what else is there? There's a lot of good trap cards still. Even if you play, um, even if you don't play the the skill and you play the pre-prep, what reason, and the rituals, um, you summon it off of this. You can't get floodgate trap holds um, if people are still playing that. You know, depending what the meta shapes up to be. Um, but after that, it's kind of all right. Uh, it's not the worst. It's not the best. It's just all right. Uh, you can't get Nightmare Wield uh, with the Relinquished under the Djinn. So you're really playing control in the sense that you're controlling that your opponent can't really touch you in some aspects of the game. Uh, it's like a very, very weakened down version of Jinzo. Your opponent can still activate traps, but it's not going to affect whatever one card that you summoned off. So I think this card still stays as part of the deck regardless. Um, moving on. I gotta say it, Dark Eruption is still a great card. Um, just for the fact that it's gonna help you recycle a lot of things um, throughout the deck, whether they be the Relinquish, especially if you're playing the skill, every card is a ritual spell card. You're gonna wanna get these back, especially if you have to discard them to summon another one. It's kinda dead in graveyard, you can't summon it back off the Magician because it wasn't summoned properly. So getting them back with Dark Eruption is a really, really great strategy. Um, mainly for the fact that it replaces itself for something more needed, um, whether it be, you know, relinquished, it can be a gin if for whatever reason you need it, I think that's dumb, um, or a magician in your hand, I, again, don't know why you would need it, but, you know, if that happens, it happens, you know, um, as well as Sphere Karibos, Sphere Karibos is another card, um, that's still gonna be used in this deck till the end of time, um, nothing really changes there, however, from there on, things kind of get... Um, shaky mistakey again. Look, so far we've determined, so far at least, <clears throat> determined three, two, two, ones. You know, maybe this goes up depending on when it comes out. Um, I still say you play your three Sinjus because what you're going to be searching for. So you're playing six Relinquish technically. You're still going to play maybe one, two Wild Tornado and then definitely two Storm at least. Um, for the deck so you have a lot of space to work with oh and three sphere Kribo. don't let me forget that so you're gonna have a lot of space to play with so what, what do we got here from just what we mentioned right so yeah three three and then three sphere Kribo, nine uh, four cards total for wild tornado and the storm so that's 13 14 15 16 17 18 i mean normally we play 22 23 card decks now you know maybe not here maybe we'll play with 21 22 um so you still got at least three to four spots left over for some other good stuff, even if they're trap cards. Oh, by the way, we're gonna play Book of Moon. Of course, we gotta play Book of Moon. What am I saying? Um, so maybe that's the new deck. Um, is it the best? Meh. Um, we did get a new few other cards like uh, the Mirror Wall and whatnot, Shrink, but I don't really think that we use these in Relinquished, at least. Um, it's gonna have a hard time don't get me wrong it will have a hard time and we're really only playing one trap card or two copies of one trap card so jinzo is not really the biggest issue uh, but there's no real jinzo out in this deck if you notice so maybe that's something we have to adjust to um <clears throat> maybe start playing more offerings things like that and eh, you know i mean you got a, an out with wild tornado but you have to you have to uh use storm as well so it's not really a one card out it kind of sucks so again we have to be careful what we play you know you know if you want to play hammer shot you can play hammer shot if you're into that more more than uh, offerings to the doomed um but other than that the deck kind of lags in the fact that it's just getting left behind and power crept <sighs> it sucks and I enjoy the enthusiasm people have since pre-prep came out for this deck. And I don't really think it propels it to that next level. I think for the fact, again, there's nothing really good about it that makes it overwhelmingly plusable. Um, plusable and plausible. Because um, it just sucks. 
I mean, Jinzo gets over this now, uh, you know, you summon this turn one, your opponent's just gonna take it, send it off. Ah, it's not fun. <laughs> it's just not fun. Uh, and there's no real way to play this deck anymore. So is Jinzo, I mean, is uh, Jinzo, is Relinquished viable for this upcoming speed duel format? Probably not. And it hurts to say that because I really enjoy this deck. I would love for somebody to innovate this deck and make it really, really good, but I just don't think it's possible. Even with all the new cards that we're getting, I don't think it's possible, even with pre preparation of rights. Because pre prep is kind of just meh, you know? So, with that being said, that's going to be it for me. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Uh, am I right? Am I wrong? Are you going to say, forget it, I'm going to make Relinquish as best as I can and take it to online tournaments and when we get back up and running, real tournaments? And, um, you know, what do you think about future product for Speed Duels? Should Relinquish get some help? Should it not? Um, should we even focus on Relinquish? Should we make a deck with Thousand Eyes instead as the main uh, target here to summon? I mean, because we still have the ability to with Thousand, thousand Eyes spell, but, you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe not. We'll have to see. Um, but yeah, uh, guys, don't forget to like. Again, comment, subscribe. Maybe you give us a share here or there. Go ahead and check out our, um, our Discord link down below as long uh, as long as well as uh, along with. I want to say as well and along with um, as well as uh, Tetra's Speed Duel Discord server. Link down in the description below. And uh, yeah, guys, let us know what deck for Speed Duels you would like to cover next whether it be viability or deck profile. Um, and again, yeah, just leave it in a comment down below. Uh, until next time, guys, this is Kevin with Pog Pogs. See ya.